You know, I, I feel like I'm always preaching about this, but I think it's really important because, yes, we, we may perform because we want to represent our culture not only to uh, uh, ourselves, but to other fellow, fellow, uh, fellow Filipinos so that they know that we know our culture is alive. And also, but we also mm -hmm. want to uh, represent it to the outside world with a feeling, a feeling of connectedness, not down to the step or the choreography, but to the feeling. Does that make any sense? Because there's a feeling when you dance. The feeling should have um, something behind it. It shouldn't just be about, okay, on step eight, I move here. Or, okay, I'm doing this all in rhythm count of eight. The way our dances work, where we're, where we're from, is that all the dances are very simple. And that's for a reason, because the principles behind the dance are the ability to be able to, one, check the timing and spacing between you and your partner next to you, and to be able to play in a call and response. So if I play bung, then somebody plays bung, you know, they're, they're always doing a call and response in the music. If we can keep those principles, I think that like, and understand those principles behind them, behind that dance, and understand the beauty and the simplicity of it, then I think that uh, the next generation has a chance of making sure that the, the the tradition is not just something on a stage. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I, I hear that. Uh, the the issue that I, I also think that we, we have is that it looks simple, and yet it it's really not. Once you get into the polyrhythms, yeah. that's not simple stuff anymore. And and when you get into that sync, when you actually play, and you hear the polyrhythm happening, it's it's quite beautiful. It's really amazing because you could hear all of these things happening, but it only happens when everyone does it together. Yeah, I think yeah, that you know sometimes it used to be in uh, when you used to, back in the '90s when we used to like uh, talk about, hey, I want some gongs and stuff like that to play. Uh, the, our, our relatives in the Philippines say, why you want that? You know, and and they would be asking, and all of a sudden they started seeing us folks in America play this stuff, and then all the other folks around the world playing this because we were trying to make some connection back to that place that we call home, right? And then all of a sudden there was this massive revival of of uh, music and dancing, and you can see it now in the schools in the Philippines. It's it's massive now. Like they have big old dance offs now. It looks like like uh it's it's in it, massive festivals and they make up their own dances now and uh and i guess that's authentic now but uh, it's there is a movement out there for people to share that but i think for us sometimes we discount that which is, looks simple as being something that is is is, is not worthy and yet yeah. in that simplicity there's a lot of complexity in it uh, mm -hmm. they come, and that's why I think it's actually hard to pick up. Because even though yep. it looks simple, like initially when I was a kid, I thought, why are they banging a bunch of pots and pans? Things that look like pots. And actually, literally, yeah. they were, because we didn't have the instruments yet, people actually, I remember the Wandog family or something like that, they, <laughs> they had some instruments, originally instruments that they were bringing over. Some were authentic, but then when they were sharing it in the, in the BVAC of L.A., some were literally made out of like old pans and pots, and eventually, as as people started making this again, they started claiming this uh, back, uh, reclaiming uh, this cultural aspect of ours. People started bringing like the authentically made stuff, the the stuff that that's made out of a uh, of, of, of brass and 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 the materials that would be resonant. But in order for some of us to to make these instruments back in the the eighties. People were literally grabbing their pots and pans and and remelting them so that they can they could create an instrument. It was pretty amazing uh, what was happening just to re uh, reconnect with one's culture, uh, re and and then share that with others. But there was a huge movement uh, back back in those days to uh, to to reclaim. And I remember very much so that there was a lot of conversations. I could hear the the elders. They were trying to piece together what they remember uh, o over the years, how, how to put all of these sounds and rhythms together. 
And even then, when we were practicing for our kanyals, they would have these conversations about how to recreate the thing that they remember in their memory. Um, the interesting part was a lot of that would be arguments because people wouldn't realize that, like, from, uh, like, say, for example, Eastern Bontok plays a little bit differently than Western oh, Bontok time, yeah. or something. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. between speeds and. To, so people were just like, even now, like during the IIC that I went to in Hawaii, man, there, everybody wanted to do the takik, right? But of course, we couldn't get in sync, everybody right? it differently. It took about 20 minutes for that to even like, uh, to, to move forward because they're like, no, no, do it like this. No, no, do it like yeah, this. Yeah, we had oh, to agree right? on the regional sound. And we really that's did have to agree. So that's what I mean by the complexity of this thing. Yeah. And that it I looks remember, simple, yeah. but it's really deeply complex. And we're still inventing. Uh, and then I think there's got to be room for that that kind of like invention in there. Uh, which, yeah, yeah. Which... I mean, I, I'm, I'm, don't get me wrong with uh, authenticity. Like, I feel that like innovation is fine. You know, like <laughs> innovation is fine. But it's just like you gotta if you if you're going for a source, you just have to double check your sources if you can. Double check your sources if you can. Yeah, because you you, still... you start seeing. Yeah. Because you start seeing, like, yeah, yeah. even even for our younger people, you start hearing uh, a mixture of mm -hmm. of like the different sounds. Because I know when mm -hmm. uh, I remember when they were trying to learn how to do the bendian, uh, there was a mixture mm -hmm. of how like the kantanai would interpret it with like how what I was told how the bendian was supposed to play, and there was just it was yeah. it was it was not so much confusion, but it was like a mixture a mixture of like a culture within a culture kind of thing. It was, mm -hmm. it was really interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. it, really, yeah. it would be authentic to the people in 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 Canada in your region too. So that that that's what I think would be uh, that that's what makes it quite special. Yeah, it, it's yeah. true. I yeah. think that's well, one I mean, of the most. So that's one sorry, of the most. Sorry, in, thanks. That's one of the most interesting but frustrating things about all the nuances. And I don't think a lot yeah. of people realize that there are so many little minor differences between. Um, how everybody performs and uh, a lot of times they think it's their way is the right way <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah it's generation. yeah it's 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 interesting <laughs> to see how everybody else does it as well so i think if if we could just uh, be mindful about that i think i don't think there'll yeah. be any issues but obviously the my, you know, most mindful thing is the, the the most the part to be really mindful is that if you're going to play it a certain way it can make your feet move a certain way. So mm. it should make your feet move a certain way. Does that make, make sense? Don't try to mm. fit like uh, this other type of footwork into this type of sound is what I'm saying. You know, because if you listen to the beat and the groove, it should move your feet a certain way. It should lift your feet up a certain way. Mm -hmm. Like the difference between like, versus like do you hear the the, the slight differences that will make your feet move a certain way right it'll make your right. knees bounce in a certain you, you, way. you'd be hopping in that first one and the second one yeah. you'd be swaying yeah uh, yeah so you not you don't sway in the other one and you don't hop in the other one right it's 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 kind of like that's why people start doing just the choreography without recognizing that no actually that that's even if you're doing that choreography it means you're not listening to the gong mm. you know mm. a lot of the times there's signals in the gong so like if you hear in the ifugao mm. uh in the ifugao dances like um like when you hear yeah, there's a signal when to turn bang 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 but for, like first it'll be like it'll go like that it'll run and then somebody will usually create a hand signal to turn, bang, bang, bang. Then everybody will like do the paya. They'll, they'll put their arms out and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they'll go back to the beat. Bang, bang, bang. Then they go back to that one. And that's the signal to go. Those are the things that the dancer should be vibing with and connecting with the people who are playing. If you're just doing it by count step, like if you're just doing it by, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, turn. Dun, two, three. If you're doing that, then then it kind of like the dance kind of loses its soul, you know? I mean, yeah. at least how we dance our traditional dances, you're kind of missing something 
and it's the connection between the instrument and the and, and you along with the people next to you so i think if you keep those things in mind um uh then people can um you know the next generation is going to be all right even if they innovate even if they innovate and yeah. the other aspect i was talking about is like i don't know you might not be christian or not or not believe in prayer but there should be some type of i don't know my, my personal belief is that there's there is some type of intention or prayer or mindfulness practice that's connected with with these dances well there is a and even if you do it for performance you should always have that in your heart and in your your mind if you don't have those aspects then it's all again it just goes back to just being stage performance